experiences their culture. The continuum. Yes, the continuum. And this is what they were able to celebrate, practice, carry on in Congo Square. Now, some people could carry it on during the week, but most of them couldn't. But in Congo Square, they could then revive, remember, uh, and celebrate these cultural practices. So, what has happened to this? In 1916, um, Alice Dunbar Nelson, you may have heard of Paul, Paul Dunbar, Paul, Paul, Paul Lawrence Dunbar, he was married to Alice Dunbar Nelson, who's from New Orleans. She wrote an article in the Journal of Negro History in 1917, and she said, those who have heard the weird motif of uh, colorist tellers bambula dance have heard the tune of, con of the Congo dance. This was one of the most popular dances in Congo Square. And she said, every child could sing it in New Orleans. It was so, so popular. Right. So, she said that God, God chalk. I'm not. I should have read this straight. Uh, treated the, the the theme of the dance. He used the theme for his composition, La Bambula. But uh, some people may have got forgotten about it. So then she says, Coolidge Taylor, who was African descendant, revived it. Now let's see what I mean by that. This is the melody that she talked about, and. Um, the first one, I won't be able to get through all this because I want to show you some other things, is uh, the, the WPA interview that I found where the African, no, she was European descendant, she was a grandchild of a plantation owner, talked about everybody singing this song in New Orleans. The second one is the rhythmic pattern, which is what's called the habanero. Can you say that, habanero? Habanero. habanero. So it habanero. makes you think of what? Hot. Peppers. And what yeah. country or what, uh, Ethnic group habanero. What do you think of? You think of Germans? You think of Spanish. 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 And, Spanish. Right. Yeah. and so habanera rhythmic pattern is really an African rhythmic pattern that has a Spanish name because it became so popular in Cuba that they gave it the name uh, of Havana, habanera. So uh, this is a habanero rhythmic pattern, and we'll read more about it hopefully. And then the third one is this melody. So when you hear the melody of this, you would then hear the melody that this man used when he created this composition. It is so, so very apparent. And so look at the year, 1844, 1845. Louis Gottschalk uh, was the descendant of Haitian parents, Haitian family, and that family absconded to New Orleans during the revolution, Haitian Revolution, from St. Domingue, and brought with them the nurse of African descent named Sally. So in his, his biography, he talks about having a fever one night, and uh, this melody was in going through his head, going through his head. So although his family lived on Rampart Street, a lot of historians say that he did not go to Congo Square. So we say, whether he went to Congo Square or not, he knew the songs of Congo Square. He knew them from Sally. And remember I showed you this? This was written by his sister, Clara mm -hmm. Peterson. Clara Goss Chuck Peterson. She knew the song so well that she could write out the, 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 uh, the notation. And thankfully, we have, and, we, and they show the habanero rhythmic pattern, which we know. No, oh, so let's clap this. Boom, 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 boom. Oh yeah, no, 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 no. You know that melody? Yeah. Carmen? Carmen. And, all right, so now this time I want you to buy the class pad. So you're going to do bum, 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 And you're going to do something else, I'll tell you. All right, over here. Okay. And so, by default, they were doing the second line in Congo Square, to say the least, right? So, Along with lots of other beats. Okay, so that's how we come up with things like that. So now, 40 or so, I think 60 years later, this man, Samuel Coles Taylor, treats the same melody in his 
classical composition, but he does something so profound. He puts the melody line at the top, and he also says where it's from where the West Indies. He gives credit. Wow. Yes, very very important. He gives credit to Haiti or maybe even other parts of the West Indies that this was sung, but but we know Haiti for sure. Okay, so and for many of the other Creole slave songs. This is because that was considered a Creole slave song, meaning that Creole language uh, originated during that period. That period. So, Freddie, it seems like you had similar practices, cultural practices, Cuba, Brazil. You know, um, how much of that narrative has ha have been captured and documented? Thanks to me, it's being captured. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> That's what I'm trying to lead to. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Pivotal book in the 1980s, The Cultural Unity of Black 